Hello my gorgeous people, it's Grace here, Bikedonia. As you can see, I am lying in a hammock with my knee elevated as per doctor's orders. It's a few days since the great spraining event and it's getting better every day, but I do have to stay off it for a couple more weeks. So I thought I would tell you about the CRF 450RL and how I feel about it on the single track. Before I left Chiang Mai, we went riding in the mountains as we do and I took the CRF 450RL out for a little spin. Okay, so she's running the Vortex ECU with the Yoshimura RS4 exhaust. Tires are Michelin Enduro mediums and she's got a few thousand kilometers on her mostly off-road. This is the 2021 model. Now, of all these mods, I think the most worthwhile one is the Vortex ECU. Stock, the power delivery is not super smooth. It's kind of snatchy, and once you chuck a aftermarket exhaust on there, then it gets even more uneven. So the Vortex ECU gives you apparently some more horsepower, but what you really notice is that it smooths out that power delivery. You have buckets of power, but it becomes usable. So I'm a big fan of the Vortex ECU. I rode the bike on road with and without the Vortex ECU you and I was pretty stoked when we made that change. But this is my first time really riding on the single track with the CRF 450RL. Now I'm 165 centimeters tall which is about 5 foot 4 so as you can imagine this is a reasonably tall bike for me. Basically I can get one foot down at a time. Fortunately it's a nice skinny bike though so that makes it feel way more manageable. So let's take a ride and see how we go. This is in the mountains near Chiang Mai. As you can see, it's single track, but there's nothing difficult about it, as long as you don't fall off the edge. If you fall off the edge, you might have quite a time getting the bike back up that cliff. But so far, so good. The first thing that strikes me is just how smooth and nice the suspension is in these conditions. The bike feels really nicely balanced and easy to maneuver at this speed, so I'm probably doing between 15 and 20 kilometers an hour through here. Naturally the suspension is not fully plush like a real enduro bike, but it's really pleasant under these conditions. What I'm really appreciating right now is that smoothness from the Vortex ECU. This is obviously a really powerful bike to be riding the single track with. And so you want to be really in control of that early power delivery. You want to be nice and smooth, you want to be on top of your clutch because otherwise things could go pear-shaped super quickly. Now on this particular day I've just gotten off my KLX 230. I managed to break my rear brake line coming through a creek crossing and so it was a great excuse to swap bikes. Surprisingly, even though this is a much bigger bike, because it has that much more power and it has that much better suspension, it takes way less energy to ride, as long as the conditions allow you to maintain some sort of momentum. Obviously, if you do stack it or you're in the really hard enduro stuff, picking up a bike this tall is going to suck. Now, on the topic of hard enduro, I certainly haven't attempted that on this bike myself. But my friend, who is a very talented trials rider, has. And we've learned two things about the CRF 450RL from that experience. The first one is that this bike is not designed for hard enduro. And the second is that this bike is not designed for hard enduro. Let me explain. The first problem you're going to find when you're in those really technical sections, when you're really going really slowly through those obstacles, you're using pivot turns, you're using really fine clutch control, is that your bike is going to boil. So it's a water-cooled bike, it has a radiator fan, and it's just inadequate. This bike produces plenty of power, it's heaps of fun, and it just cooks itself. You'll be out there in the jungle and you'll hear the sound of the water boiling inside the bike like it's time to make a cup of tea. This is obviously not good for your engine, so every two and a half minutes you have to stop and wait for the temperature to come down. Now we've tried using all of the fancy coolant, it doesn't solve the problem. I've also talked to the guys at Vortex, so when you install the Vortex ECU, 
It normally will switch off your radiator fan when the bike is not actually running. This is different from stock which will allow the radiator fan to keep running with just the key turned on. Now Vortex have done the research on this, they tell me that the increase in temperature after you turn off the engine and you turn off the fan should only be about 5 degrees centigrade. So it all comes back to whether your cooling system is maintaining the engine at a proper temperature while running. And if you do hard enduro on this bike, it would appear that it doesn't. Now I guess this should come as a surprise to no one because if you're looking to do hard oh, enduro, buying a 4 stroke 450 is not going to be a smart choice. Of course we didn't buy this bike for hard enduro, but if you're like us and you see those hard enduro bits and then you can't help yourself, well this is relevant information for you. Now anecdotally, the other point of weakness of this bike oh. is the starting system, so the starter motor and the starter clutch. If you think about it logically, this is a pretty big, pretty high compression single cylinder engine that you're turning over with that starter motor every time. And I can 100% say that there's a knack to starting this bike. You do need to be careful, you can't just mash that starter button. When you're stuck on the side of a hill, this can be really annoying. If you'll allow me to demonstrate. Oh, and did I mention that this bike doesn't need a lot of encouragement to wheelie? Anyway, back to the starter motor issue, this is another reason why this bike is not built for hard enduro because that's going to obviously involve a lot of starting the bike in gear and repeatedly starting it again and again and again. So this bike is way more suited to the more open trails as you'd guess with a 4 stroke 450. Do as I say and not as I do. The reason I can tell you about this bike in hard enduro conditions is because that's what we keep doing to it. It seems that we can't help ourselves. So here is the crux of the issue. It's a big tall heavy bike and if you want to do hard enduro stuff with it you're going to have to rely on your clutch control really really heavily. You're going to need to get out some of that trial style clutch technique. And this is exactly what Pilar does. He rides the CRF 450RL like a trials bike, which is great, except that the clutch is simply not designed for that degree of punishment. So sooner rather than later, you're going to need a new clutch if you insist on doing hard enduro with this bike. In our case, it was less than 3,000 kilometers. So there you go, this bike is a bundle of fun and brilliant on the more open trails, but if you take it to do hard enduro, you're going to need a new clutch and you're probably going to cook your engine. It's marketed as a dual sport and it's certainly capable on the easy end of off-road and the low speed end of on-road. But I'd recommend no highways and no hard enduro. Anyway, that's my review. Stay safe and have fun.